Welcome to Frost Astrophotography. In this video I'm going to attempt to image the uh, Whirlpool Galaxy or Messier 51 even though I'm very limited with my 510 millimeter focal length. It is galaxy season, or at least at the time of the recording of this video, but here at 63 degrees north, that is a very short season. It has actually not been astronomical darkness at all since April 11th here, and I was lucky enough to get a few nights, or just one night actually, this season for Messier 51, and I have combined that with data from last year in January, I believe it was 2023, and was able to produce somewhat of an image to show you. Messier 51, or the Whirlpool Galaxy, is in fact a spiral galaxy located about 23.5 million light years from Earth. It is about 88% of the size of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, and spans over 76,900 light years. The galaxy has two very prominent spiral arms, and it is also interacting with its companion. One possibility is that the companion galaxy NGC 51 Nine five actually passed through the main disk of Messier 51 uh, about five to six hundred million years ago. In this possible scenario, NGC 5195 may have passed through from behind and also made another pass through the disk about fifty to a hundred million years ago and it is now located, as we observe it, slightly behind Messier 51. Since this is a broadband target, I'm not using my regular SHO filters. I'm using my L, R, G and B broadband filters. And I was able to complete uh, the set of data with the data that I gathered for over a year ago making up a total of 77 light frames of 300 seconds each, giving me a total integration time of 6.4 hours. Let's jump into PixInsight and look at some processing steps for this galaxy.
Taking a look at the stacked master files from L, R, G, and B, you can see that we have some problems or challenges, shall we say. First of all, we have some rotational differences. Since I keep my camera and equipment static on my telescope, it has uh, rotated, or the Earth, I would say, since uh, the last time I imaged this uh, one year ago. And you can see that on this line here, everything has rotated a bit to the left here. That doesn't matter too much for this image since uh, the main feature is pretty small and in the center of the frame here. And I will first of all crop this uh, a fair amount to try to make the object a little bit bigger. And I can also rotate this however I would like before the final processing steps. You can also see that I have some problems in all of the frames. The luminance here, we have light pollution, a lot of it. We have some reflections going on here right at the top. Aside from the overall light pollution, the same in the blue here and it's much worse. Here you can see the rotation very clearly. Uh, there's also some artifacts from the stacking. Uh, it did not remove all the satellites uh, because there were a lot of satellites in these images. You can see traces of them everywhere. Not a big deal as well. I'm going to uh, be heavy on the processing for the background for this image. And the green here as well, you have light pollution on the other side. That is because this was mainly done uh, or gathered after the meridian flip, I would say. Some interesting things to notice is that if we're looking at the luminance here, now this is drizzled, of course, as well to gain some uh, resolution before we try to crop it. Uh, you have a lot of interesting things going on in the image here. You can see that we have several galaxies here. There's one galaxy there, there's one galaxy here, there's one galaxy here. I think we have some more galaxies over here as well. It's a little bit hard to differentiate them now. Maybe they'll, they will be more here. You have another little galaxy behind the Whirlpool galaxy. Uh, so this area is fairly interesting, but like I said, I'm very limited with my small Skywatcher Evo Star 80. Uh, with my reducer flattener, I'm only at 510 millimeter focal length that is not so good for galaxies but anyway you can see that we have a galaxy down here and uh, it's nice to find some objects that you weren't expecting to see well i didn't research them ahead of time there's also a little galaxy down here yeah so there's going to be a lot of processing on uh, these master frames before we go into the nonlinear phase to actually try to produce an image. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to show you the luminance filter in the linear phase, but I did exactly the same processing for RGB filters as well. The first step is that I did a dynamic crop and a, fa a fairly hard one. I wanted to have some kind of size on the galaxy without, you know, being here with a flurry, blurry thing in the middle. So I cropped very hard, I would say, to 
get into the view a lot. Uh, I do also did a gradient correction and that is to try to remove some light pollution and normalize the frame here. I did a dynamic background extraction uh, after the gradient correction and I actually saved the DBE parameters for the first image, you know, uh, drag the triangle down to the workspace here and then you can open it on all of the other images. And if you do that on luminance, you can be quite sure that you're not uh, ending up on a star, for example, with any of the points. And I did a linear fit to all of the frames using the luminance as a master. And then I did the blur and noise exterminator. And I think I got a fairly good result, uh, reducing the stars somewhat. It is challenging when you're cropping this hard, I would say. Uh, but I do want to have a little bit bigger picture. I don't want to be restricted to a small little dot in the middle. That is not very satisfying. You can see this galaxy clearly down here. I manually stretched all of the stacked light frames from the linear phase and moved on to the non-linear phase, proceeded with what I normally do, and that is to use a star exterminator to do starless versions of all filters. As you can see here, I have uh, some things I want to address. You can see some artifacts from a satellite passing here. You also have some background issues that I'm not sure if they are gas stuff uh, that you want to preserve. But since this is uh, a Whirlpool Galaxy image, I'm not going to care anything about the information out here. I'm just going to care about the main feature here. For that, I'm using a range mask and a fairly big one. I extracted the luminance from the luminance filter and I've actually removed all of the background making this mask just protecting the central area. Uh, you can apply this mask to uh, the image that you want to adjust and then invert it to protect just the central area of the galaxy. You can also remove show mask so you can manipulate this freely. What you can do now is that you can open up Curves Transformation, uh, open up a preview and try to adjust the background here like you can see me doing now. You can remove some of the noise or things you don't want in the background without affecting or just slightly affecting the outer edges of this galaxy. When you're finished, you can simply remove the mask. And I did this for all four filters, ending up with something looking like this. So before adjusting background and after for the blue filter, for the green here, before and after adjusting. And for luminance. Uh, before adjustments here, you can see that you have a lot of things floating around. 
probably could have kept all of these background things since they are uh, gas and dust, I would say. But I didn't want that, so I did the same procedure for luminance and also for red, as you can see here before and after. Uh, one flaw that I have in my data is that uh, the data is actually 27 luminous frames, 20 red frames, 17 green frames, and only 13 blue frames. Since I wasn't able to get good data, it was taken at the very end of that session for some reason. The focus was off or I had clouds resulting in frames that were too blurry to be used, unfortunately. So it's lacking a bit in the blue, which is unfortunate because I really want to bring out the blue in this. We will see how that will affect the final image. So the next step in narrowband is to use pixel math or some other means of joining. For LRGB, I usually use the LRGB combination. That lets me integrate LRG and B light frames uh, into a color image. Uh, remember to use chrominance noise reduction as well when you're using this. And that produced the image that you see in front of you now. So this is the first integration. You can see that it is very reddish. Uh, it's lacking some of blue data. I realized that. Uh, I also see some magenta looking things here and I really don't uh, want that. I want to remove that as well. So I actually used SCNR as a first step and uh, I didn't remove as much as I normally do. I removed 80% of the uh, normal image and 50% of inverted image instead of 100% that I normally do because I wanted to keep some of the red uh, nuances uh, in the image here. And I thought this was a good result. I then used my normal script here in my toolbox, the selective color correction, to initially start to enhance some of the colors in the image here. Uh, I wanted, since uh, the data is lacking uh, on the blue department, I wanted to add some blue or uh, increase the saturation of the blue, I would say, and the contrast just a little bit. And also for some of the darker reddish tones in the image here. When that was finished, I ran the normal sharpening. And you can see here that there is a big difference. It's always hard when you're cropped as hard as I've done here but you don't want the object to be this blurry. So I actually ran through and got a fairly good result on the sharpening of this object here, like you can see. Uh, when that's finished, I ran my normal TGV denoise even though there's not a lot of noise in the image, you can see that uh, on these parts here, it has done a fairly good job, I would say. Bringing the noise down on this fine little object. Finally, I adjusted the background a little bit more just to increase uh, the focus on the middle object here, just a little bit more. The final adjustment is another color uh, correction, slightly adjusting the saturation of red and blue and slightly adjusting the contrast again. Without overdoing it, I would have liked to have more focal length and more data, of course, but 
I will have to live with this. The final result for the starless version here, as you can see, and it was time to address the stars. So I actually did not use L for stars. I used R, G and B for stars. And that means that I use just RGMB and I use LRGB process to combine them. Although I unchecked the luminance here just using RG and B. And that resulted in some stars looking like this for RGB. And I needed to adjust the stars here as well as you can see the colors are not really good so i actually ran the same scnr as i did for the starless version correcting the color removing some of the magenta uh, colors in that image i also color adjusted a little bit uh, you hardly see any difference here, but increased saturation on blue and red a little bit and some increased contrast. And then I did a reduction of the stars that I normally do just to be able to make the galaxy pop out here in uh, the end. Combination of the two here. So we have a, an image that is LRGB of the Whirlpool Galaxy, Messier 51. And we have RGB stars in the background. It is heavily cropped. It is also lacking in some areas blue. It is heavily processed on the background I would say but even though that is the case I think it's a fairly good first image and that I was able to produce it with the amount of time that I had and my 510 millimeter focal length. In total uh, 77 light frames uh, 6.4 hours of data LRGB with RGB stars and of course this was taken with my miniature home observatory if you haven't checked out my series of videos on building your own home observatory please check that out on my channel you might get some ideas of your own and that observatory is of course standing right outside in my backyard here at 63 degrees north in the high coast area of the northern part of Sweden under a Bortle 4 sky. So enjoy this image and I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you like it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're not already doing so. If you want to support me and the work with these videos there is an option listed in the video description that you can use. Until the next video I wish you have clear skies.